Hey, today we're gonna to be talking about these coffee grinders right here. Now this is the Time War 64S and the Time War 78S. Let's talk all about these grinders and tell you if these really are the new flat burr kings. Is that, do you, yeah, let's go with it. I'm excited. Now, Time War is a brand that's been around for a few years in the coffee industry, and these are their new electric grinders, and these are very interesting for many reasons, for their price, their capabilities, but this right here is their first iteration into an electric grinder that's a flat burr grinder. Now, here we have a 64 millimeter version, a very popular size in flat burrs, and a large 78 millimeter flat burr grinder. It's pretty massive. Now, right now, it's on Kickstarter. Both of them are, and they have like a discounted price. There's always risks with Kickstarter, and I'll talk about Kickstarter specifically specifically at the end of this video and what you might want to know before backing a grinder like this. So stick around for that. But this one right now on Kickstarter is discounted at around $299 US. By the time you're watching this, it might be more. Like I said, 64 millimeter flat burrs will get you variable RPM not seen on a grinder this size or price before. So it goes from 800 RPMs up to 1200 and that will change your grind distribution. Though this one goes from 800 up to 1400 RPMs. Now there's two models for each size. So there's four grinders in total. And so Time Wars given us a ton of different options here, which I love because honestly, a lot of grinder manufacturers have done like a one grinder fits all approach. Now what we have here is the S model and then the traditional model. So there's the 078 and the 064 to represent their burr size. And then there's also the 064S and the 078S for espresso. You might wonder what's different about it. What makes it espresso super easy? Now this has a stepless adjustment versus stepped. Now even their stepped adjustments aren't true stepped adjustments. And what I mean by stepped is basically like a physical click in between each number. So it's very easy to go back to setting that you might have had prior. With this stepped adjustment, you can find it actually right here. It's it's like a soft stepped adjustment is what I would probably call it. And it's basically allowing you to have like a physical click on each number, but you can also use the space in between each number. And so it's completely capable of being stepped lists in a way, but not fully. It's kind of like a hybrid, but you can use in between numbers and it doesn't shift. And then this one right here is the 64S. It has a complete stepless adjustment with no physical clicks. Hopefully that makes sense. Both work pretty well. I definitely prefer the stepless adjustment, but I would understand why somebody on the 78 or the 64 who are using it only for filter coffee might prefer that stepped adjustment. What else is different between the two? Well, the 64 and the 78 have a completely different burr. Now the burr on the 64 and the 78 are Turbo Burrs. Now that's what they call it. I think it's kind of a cheesy name. You know, we'll go with it. It's it's honestly a ghost burr that they've made, they've patented, you know, I don't know why it's patented, but here we are. The cups that it produces are pretty fantastic. Uh, at least on the 78, I actually don't have the 64 ghost burrs. I do apologize, or the turbo burrs, sorry. So I can only comment on the 78 turbo burrs, but my experiences are good. Uh, the coffees are incredibly juicy, incredibly clean, incredibly, incredibly sweet. And so if you're wanting a filter coffee grinder at this kind of size, at this kind of budget, you want something with low retention, I, I recommend it for filter coffee. But if you want a more detailed overview of the 078 without the espresso model, because that's what we're really gonna focus on today, go check out Lance's video. I'll link it down below. And I know that he's done a full comparison with this to the Ode and other grinders like that. So I'll just save you that time there today. It uses a ghost style where it basically cuts the coffee instead of crushing it and, and smushing it. And so that's a very big difference in the way that it creates the coffee grounds. So there are less fines, there's a much more uniform ground, but you won't be able to use this for espresso. So if you wanna use it for espresso, then you're gonna want the S. So the S uses a more traditional burr as you can see here. And let's talk about the 78 first and then we'll go to the 64. Now the 78 has a burr geometry that actually very closely resembles something from Weber Workshops, which is an incredibly premium brand within coffee. They have a grinder called the EG1, which is incredibly expensive. And they have an 80 millimeter burr inside that grinder called the Core Burr. Now that Core Burr is a very good all purpose burr. It's something that you can use for espresso and filter coffee. Now to be clear, this is not the exact same burr, but there's definitely some the inspiration going on here. Some key differences here would be that there are screw holes on this burr. Obviously the EG1 has magnets that keeps that burr in place, as well as there are three cutting blades on the 78 millimeter versus four on the 80 millimeter, as well as it is a completely different burr size, but it's very similar. We're gonna brew some coffee here in a second, but when it comes to the 78 millimeter flat burr, 
It can do espresso absolutely fine. The coffee it creates is incredibly clean. It's incredibly sweet. And honestly, if you're wanting like a clarity forward burr, the 78S burr is very good at being both good and sweet and being able to produce enough body for something like an espresso while still having enough clarity to really enjoy well, espresso, but also filter coffee. In my experience, the 78S Burr, it doesn't disappoint. And I was incredibly skeptical. I was incredibly skeptical on the Ghost Burr too. I didn't think they would actually produce as well as they did. And it seems like Time War is easily kind of snuck into this market. Witness from a distance what has been happening. Over-engineered every attribute of this grinder and their burrs match. And I have a lot of critical thoughts that we're gonna talk about, but when it comes to the burrs, they absolutely killed it on the 78 millimeter versions. If you just want something for filter coffee, I'd recommend the Turbo Burst. I feel like they create just a slightly cleaner cup, slightly juicier cup. And honestly, I think you're just gonna enjoy this grinder with the stepped adjustments for filter coffee a little bit more. But the 78S, if you want something that's all purpose, that still makes good filter coffee, honestly, I really can't think of anything else in this price range worth recommending like the 78S, it's actually that good. But there are definitely some things that you should know about because it's definitely not perfect. But first let's talk about the 64. This is a small budget, friendly relative to the market. It's still expensive, but relative to the market, espresso grinder at 299 now, and I believe it's gonna go up to 450 USD in the coming months, even at that price, there hasn't really been a variable RPM, espresso friendly, small compact 64 millimeter grinder like this one. So Time War is definitely coming up to bat and trying to hit something home that hasn't yet been achieved by even some big brands like Fellow who weren't able to do espresso on the Ode. And I'm a huge fan of the Ode. The espresso range is completely capable. You have plenty of resolution here on the finer end, which wasn't something by the way, always that I found on the 78S. I found that the 78S Burr found itself under one most of the time, maximum up to one and a half, though you can change the zero point if you take off the front <coughs> dial. And this little pin here, you can unscrew and move on the front dial here. You can change the zero point, so if you have to move the resolution a little bit finer, you can do it. It won't affect your zero point on the dial, which is beautiful. It'll just change it on the internals. Time War also engineered a really unique feature that they call the fines cleaner, and it has a dual purpose. One is to knock out any retention in the ground chamber, similar to like the fellow Ode in the side knocker, but also you can use it to remove any fines, unwanted fines, or any chaff from the coffee grounds. What you would do is grind your coffee, and when you're done grinding your coffee, remove the coffee grounds, put a separate cup underneath, and then knock any of the fines and chaff into a separate cup. Now, before we talk about some flaws that I need to address, let's talk about the burrs on the 64S. It does seem that these burrs are heavily inspired by Ida Mills espresso burr, often found in like the DF64. Now, I reached out to Time War to see if it was the Ida Mill, and it's not. They use different materials, and they claim it as a patented burr. I mean, all of their burrs are patented, so I really don't know. They haven't been transparent on what is patented, why it's patented. Patented. I honestly don't get it. This one here to me seems a lot like an Ida Mill Burr. It's not exactly the same. It does seem there's some slight variations. I do find that the coffee is a little better than the Ida Mills in my experience. It could be confirmation bias, but I do think it's a little bit sweeter. It's a little less astringent than the Ida Mills, which I've never been a huge fan of. For filter coffee, it's a little astringent, but the espresso is delicious. And I think for most people, you're gonna enjoy the coffee it produces. It's got nice texture and body. And because it's a flat burr, it's still got enough clarity for you to enjoy the coffee. And I think overall, most people, are gonna be completely happy with this 64 millimeter burr version. And the 64 overall is a really good value, but the 78 is just a beast. With 400 watts of motor, there's no issues of stalling. Keep in mind the DS64, which has never had any issues with stalling from my knowledge, is 250 watts. Again, it's not without its flaws though, so, so let's talk about them. Now this has a 150 watt motor, as I mentioned. Now this 150 watt motor has sparked a lot of controversy online. That's because originally it was quoted 180, and when the Kickstarter went live, it was now quoted at 150. The reason for that is it's variable RPM. Now I'm not an electrician or an engineer, but how I understand it is at its lowest RPM, it's 150 watts. And at its highest RPM, it's 180 watts. I found that on its finest grind setting or under one on the dial at 800 RPMs, if you're doing a very lightly roasted coffee, it will initiate its fail safe. Let me show you. So it's not stalling. And in the past, I've been very, very precise in terms of what I say about stalling. Some grinders I'm very weary to recommend because of stalling issues. 
I don't think this is a stalling issue. It seems like it's a fail safe issue. Essentially, if you wanna do espresso on the 64S, you wanna grind very fine and lighter roasted of coffee that are often more dense as a bean, which is harder on that motor, you're gonna to wanna to turn it up to its max RPM or its higher RPM range. I found anything a thousand above, which is basically its halfway point and up, is never stalled for me. The a thousand point, you can see it kind of struggling, but it kind of truckers through and it does everything it can. And keep in mind as well, this is at the zero point, which is its finer setting, but it's only and only, I repeat, when it's at the 800 RPM or just slightly above, at its finest grind setting for very dense coffees. If you want to do an espresso, my recommendation is just using a higher RPM. It's definitely not something I'm excited about. It's definitely something I'm disappointed to see. Again, for most, I don't think it should be a deal breaker under the understanding that you're gonna to have to use a higher RPM. 1200 RPMs is not an issue for me. I think 1200 RPMs is understandable. It's still slower than most other burr grinders in this size. So I don't think it should be a deal breaker for espresso. If this was filter coffee installed, I would have more issues, but I personally haven't faced any issues with stalling when it comes to its filter coffee range. So this is only something to be applied for espresso. That's it. And so if that's a big deal for you, then my recommendation would be to move up to the 78. But honestly, if it is an issue, you might wanna ask yourself why. If it's because you want the full range of capabilities, understandable, understandable, I'm there with you. But if it's because you need 800 RPMs for some specific reason, why? Now, I talked about these burrs and I said they're kind of a very similar burr to the item mill that we've seen in other grinders like the DF64. I'm not a huge fan of the coffee that that has produced in the past, but this seems to be a little better. But I have also tried to see if other 64 millimeter burrs fit in this small little grinder. And they do. The SSP multi-purpose burrs fit just fine. And interestingly enough, even at its 800 RPM and its finest grind setting, I wasn't able to create that fail safe issue again. So it's gonna be variant on the burr, but the stock burrs do have that issue, just so you're aware. This one up here has no issues that way. There's no stalling even at its lowest RPM. Okay, so what I wanna do now is brew some coffee. I wanna brew some espresso between these two, but then I wanna do some filter coffee between these three because while these are espresso focused, they're also all purpose focused. Now, while I'm brewing espresso for you, this might be a matter of seconds for you, but it's probably like a half an hour for me by the time I dial these grinders in, get them all set up, make sure that they're equalized in temperature. So while I'm brewing this coffee, let me, let me have a conversation with you about what I'm reading right now. And it's an article by Michaela Tomczyk called Let's Get Wild. Now, other than the amazing name of this article, I, uh, I'm excited to read about it because it's all about coffee species. Now, right now, many of us know coffee as Arabica or Robusta, but there are many different coffee species. And this article specifically talks about the 130 other species. So here you are watching a YouTube video about coffee methodology and coffee gear and coffee grinders and all that kind of stuff that helps you in your understanding of this craft. But why not get into a magazine? Something that you can sit down and enjoy without the strap to technology or YouTube or social media. Standard is that. I honestly love this magazine and I cannot recommend it enough. Standard really has been a huge support to this channel and ensuring that we're continually able to do videos going forward. So if you wanna dive into learning more about coffee, I cannot recommend them enough. Use the link down below. They track that to see how many people just come from these videos. So it helps out this channel as well. Right now they also have a deal where you can get a free issue of Standard, try them out so you don't have to overcommit and buy a subscription before you've even tried one of their products. It's cool, it's free. Well, who doesn't love free stuff? Use the link down in the description below. And again, one more time, Sarah, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Okay, so I brewed two espressos here and let's save the whole blind tasting for filter coffee because I'd rather speak to my pre-existing experiences with both of these grinders, doing a bunch of blind tastings rather than just one. Hopefully that makes sense. And with this right now, I brewed a pink bourbon from Colombia. Let's just taste these and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Let's speak to the 78S. Now you may have noticed that I didn't use any RDT in making these shots. Thank goodness, right? I mean, nothing wrong with a little spritz of water on your beans to remove static, but these grinders are pretty good without it. In fact, I'd recommend not using RDT so that you can take advantage of the fines catcher. With espresso, I do find myself using that fines catcher as more of a retention reducer than a fines catcher but either way they work fairly well. Now with espresso, I find the 78 to have a very limited range as I've mentioned before. Right now I'm at about 0.5. I probably could have gone even finer. Now I could open up that range a little bit by two ways, changing the RPM to go a little faster. Right now I'm at about halfway, which 
it's about 1100 RPM. So this goes up to 1400 RPM. So I could extend that range a little bit by creating some more fines by speeding it up. But also I could change the zero point and go a little finer because the burrs aren't quite touching at zero yet. Now, that being said, the espresso is incredibly tasty. It's very sweet, it's very juicy. There's no astringency in this cup. It's very clean. Honestly, very impressive. And if you were to tell me this was from a $500 electric grinder from Time War, I'd laugh at you. This to me seems like an end game grinder result. This is good. So that's the 78. Let's talk about the 64. And this coffee is really tasty. Now keep in mind, this is a much cheaper grinder. You know, it's almost half the price, give or take. So that should be expected. Like there should be obviously diminishing returns here. I think the 78 makes a better cup. That might not be a surprise to many people. The 64 though is still delicious, but it's gonna be more of like a traditional style of 64 millimeter flat burr espresso. It's gonna be a little more textured, a little bit more complex. It feels a little less clean to me. And if I'm really pushing extractions on the 64 millimeter burr, the 64S, I am getting a little bit more astringency. I do think the vast majority of people shouldn't worry. I think that this is a good grinder for most people. Honestly, if you're gonna be doing primarily milk beverages, I my recommendation would be the 64S because you're not gonna really notice the difference. And this one here tends to have a little bit less body or texture, a little less of that thick gooey mouthfeel than this one will. And because you're gonna to have to run 1200 RPMs on the S anyways for a light roasted espresso, you might as well just go with this if you're gonna do dairy beverages. But if you're wanting straight black espresso and you're wanting something really clean and crisp for both espresso and then we're gonna talk about filter, then, then the 78 S seems to be my, my lean for that. Let's brew some filter coffee. All right, so this is really more for the formality of this video. I've tested these a lot since I've had these grinders and I put these things through the ringer. So I have a more formulated idea of my thoughts on the cup profiles of filter coffee for these grinders. Uh, also, sorry about these cups. All of our cupping cups are at September HQ. Okay, so I've got three delicious cups of coffee side by side. And like I said, again, I, I really try to emphasize and drive this home that any of these coffee grinders are gonna make tasty coffee. But if you had to nitpick, if you had to say, Kyle, decide which one is your favorite side by side, which most people are never gonna have the opportunity of doing, then I will do that for you right now. And I think this one right here is the cleanest cup of coffee. And I, for me, it's just the juiciest. It has very little to no astringency. To me, I think it's gonna be the 74. It could be the 64, but I think the generation two burrs are just not making clean cups this well. It's just making really delicious coffee. So this should have a seven and it does have a seven there. Let's go, okay. That one was a little more obvious and this is where it's gonna get a little more difficult. Again, before I decide here, I'm gonna take a wild guess because they're more similar, uh, but there's a little more astringency in this one. I think this one had, so I'm gonna guess that this is the ode. It should have an O, <laughs> let's go, yes. Okay, let me let me sum up my thoughts here and I'll share who I think these grinders are for. Now, while I was brewing that coffee, you may have noticed there's a big sound difference between these grinders and this one. Let me show you again. And with coffee. Once you kind of go finer and coarser, it kind of like pushes out any coffee grounds, but it almost sounds like the birds are chirping, but they're not. It's just this weird sound that I don't like. The 78 doesn't have that. Let me take this apart and show you the retention on these grinders. So if you want to take this apart, you're going to unplug it, come in closer here because the front dial here, uh, a little secret, it's actually, it's a magnet. <sighs> I love it. And it comes off just like that. Now there's a little like metal flap here you can grab to pull out the rotary burr by a little twist this comes right out and then you can see we have our 78 millimeter burrs here um, you can see if i can shine a light here there's like no retention like for me, this is this is for retention as good as the Niche Zero. Well, let's wrap this up. The Time War 64S and the 78S, are they now the flat burr king? And would I recommend it to you? Easily. 
I was less excited about these grinders than other people. And honestly, I was just not expecting the results to be as good as they were, especially with the 78S. I'm very impressed with the, the very tight tolerances within the burr carrier. Even replacing this one with the SSPs, I jammed the burr in there once because the tolerances were so tight. SSPs are also just slightly bigger. Did I expect that from Time War? I'm sorry, Time War, but I didn't. But well done. I think the 64 millimeter is a better option for most people. It's gonna create espresso with high texture, some good body. Uh, it's gonna create shots that are still higher in clarity than let's say like a conical burr, but it's not gonna create something that's super, you know, fidgety and unforgiving. It's, it's a good all purpose burr for most people. Though again, the filter coffee, I do prefer on something like the Ode. So if you're just looking for a filter coffee, either go for the turbo burr models of the Time More or go with something like the fellow Ode 2.0. But overall, my highest recommendation for all of these would be the 78S. I think it's an all-purpose burr that is fantastic. It's got the stepless adjustments, it's got variable RPM, and right now at its Kickstarter price is $4.99. To me, it's really the flat burr king. Now, for full transparency, Time War did send me these grinders. They are pre-production units. Because they're pre-production, I didn't really have the option of purchasing, at least that wasn't really given to me. Regardless of that, they did actually originally ask me if I wanted to do a sponsored video. I actually turned that down because like I've done in the past, I don't think that's fair to all of you. You deserve the absolute truth. And even if that means hurting this channel financially, I don't think it's actually worth it in the long run because, well, honestly, it's losing trust with all of you. So this is unbiased. They didn't pay me a cent. They do not get to see this video before you do. They just sent me these grinders and said, give us your honest thoughts and share with your community, which I'm doing right now. But with any Kickstarter campaign, I mean, I would know we just finished launching September, which, whoo! Thank you guys so much for making that possible. With Kickstarter, there's always a risk that it's not funded and you might not end up getting what you back. So you run that risk at a slight discounted price, but Timer's a pretty large company. So just telling you, throwing that information out there. Be sure to hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Sends out those signals to people who aren't yet aware of the specialty coffee community and these YouTube videos. And let me know in the comments down below which grinder interests you. The Sculptor 78, 64, the S models. And if you're not interested in any, let me know that down below as well. I'll be reading every single comment. Be sure to check out our free Home Barista Discord, also linked down below to continue that conversation. And if you wanna try the coffee that we brewed in this video, uh, that'll be also linked down below. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a wonderful day.